sift back throughout the annals of history, you begin to notice a trend for some of the greats or longer tenured players in the game. Many of them have an identifier, something that makes them easily stand out and easily recognizable. Characteristics that become synonymous with their greatness and in some cases are the very foundation of their games. Peyton Manning changing plays at the line, Drew Brees moving through five progressions in micro milliseconds, Pat Mahomes throwing passes that he doesn't feel obligated to look at. These identifiers don't define these players, they just differentiate them from the rest. For Ben Roethlisberger, his identifier has always been to extend the play in or out of the pocket, then sling the ball deep down the field. He's always been a master at capitalizing on broken plays and rifling bombs over the safety's head. It was damn near impossible keeping Big Ben from doing something crazy late in the down, and now it still is impossible, but for a completely different reason. Ben no longer holds the ball long enough to throw deep or create second plays. What used to be his identifier is actually now his weakness. His passer rating on plays that last longer than two and a half seconds used to hover around 95, but in 2020 fell all the way down to 72. And instead of holding the ball to let routes develop, these days he's getting rid of the ball in 2.11 seconds, which is faster than not only anybody this year, but every year since they started tracking that data. Big Ben played hot potato all season long, which in many ways has its advantages, but ultimately was one of the key factors capping the potential of the Steelers' offense and was the downfall of their season. Through the first 11 weeks, they were fourth in the league in points per game with 29.8, but then after that plummeted all the way down to just 20 points a pop. And in that time frame, Ben didn't have a single game where he tallied more than 7 yards per attempt. When we look at why this shocking shift in productivity occurred, Ben's record-setting quick release is really just the beginning. If you can imagine an offense as a giant pie with every slice representing every possible aspect of offense at their disposal, the Steelers removed way too many slices with all the things they couldn't or wouldn't do. Ben refused to hold the ball and throw it deep. The Steelers had by far the lowest play action percentage in the league. They had one of the worst offensive lines, the worst running game. They almost never operated from under center, but when they did, they had the league's highest run rate, so defenses knew exactly what was coming. They played out of empty formations more than anybody, they threw underneath the most, and all of this led them to produce one of the lowest explosive pass rates of 15 plus yards in the league. They also threw the most screen passes, dropped the most balls, and Ben had the second most passes batted at the line. All of these factors kept limiting the offensive pie and left them with only a handful of possible things they actually could do. This compressed their offensive menu, which in turn created easily exploitable tendencies. The less you're capable of doing on offense, the more vanilla you become. Defenses are too good and will start to figure out those tendencies. And as the year dragged on, they adjusted and the Steelers started to struggle. Before we dive deeper into what those tendencies were and how defenses exposed them, I want to give a huge thank you to this week's sponsor and somebody that I've been drafting with all offseason, Underdog Fantasy. If you love football, watching it, studying it, analyzing it, then I'm guessing you're like me and love playing fantasy football. And my friends at Underdog Fantasy have a $1 million cash tournament for the upcoming season. They make it super simple. You draft a fantasy football team, and then that's it. They handle all the management for you. No waivers, no injury concerns, no nothing. They'll start your best possible team every week, which lets you draft as many teams as you want without worrying about all the work. The most fun day of football season is draft day, and now you can do that whenever you want over and over again. The best part, if you draft the winning team, you can walk away with over $1 million in cash. And it's not all about the grand prize either. Underdog is over $3.5 million up for grabs in their fantasy tournament, and all you have to do is the draft. It's fun that will last you the whole season. The app is super easy to use, and you can use the film study we've watched and analyzed together to win big. So head over to underdogfantasy.com or download their mobile app, and when you deposit, they're going to give you 25 bucks right off the bat, so literally all you have to do is download the app, and they'll give you a free shot at a million dollar prize. And if you don't love it, they'll give you your money back if you're not satisfied. So go check it out. There's really nothing at all to lose. Use my promo code Rollins25 or just use that link in the description. Now, let's get back to Ben. Even though he led the league in quick game passes on short 1-3 to three step drops, he surprisingly also led the league in goes and fade routes despite having a league average deep ball percentage. 
The Steelers managed to combine the quick game with the deep passing game to protect Ben from getting hit and from the bad offensive line by using go routes he could throw in under two and a half seconds. In those first 11 weeks, he hit a lot of these go routes on three step drops, but the Steelers had to use certain formations to accommodate this, which created the tendencies defenses would later exploit. Take this example, which is something similar to what we've talked about in the last few weeks on this channel, which is the usage of 3 by one alert style concepts. The Steelers often put James Washington or Chase Claypool as the isolated alert receiver and a tight bunch formation running a concept on the other side. If Ben looks at his alert receiver pre-snap and sees there's just one high safety and he likes the matchup against the corner, he won't even look at the concept side and just take that one-on-one -on -one matchup. If there was a too high safety look, and one of those safeties was over his alert, then he'd read the concept and ignore the ISO receiver. Watch how he takes a three-step drop here instead of five or seven steps like you typically would on deeper developing go routes. This protected him from the pass rush and getting hit, while still allowing him to attack vertically downfield. The Steelers absolutely love this formation and utilize it all the time. We can see the alert up top and the tight bunch on the bottom, but now since Denzel Ward is the corner, Ben has no interest in targeting that matchup. Out of the bunch, they almost always ran a quick speed out or Oscar route with Chase Claypool and a little sit route to stretch out the coverage. And since usually the outside corner is forced to play off coverage so as not to get picked or rubbed by the bunch, it gave Claypool a lot of cushion to get open. Then after they'd established that Oscar out a few times, they'd stay in this exact formation and keep running alerts with the isolated receiver and Oscars, or double moves off of Oscar from the bunch, which was primarily how Ben attacked downfield through the early part of the year. On the season, his average depth of target was 7.4, which was pretty low, that was 33rd, but it was higher through those first 11 weeks, and then after that it started to dip. The Steelers didn't have a lot of variance in their offense, but they were good at what they did. They were really good. But when you've subtracted so many different pieces from your offensive scheme, it suffocates the remaining aspects. And if you don't continue adapting throughout the season, you die. Once defenses started picking up on all the things the Steelers weren't doing, it got progressively easier to diagnose and predict exactly what they were going to do, and they started playing them differently. After they squeaked out a win against the RG3-led Ravens in Week 12, they battled Washington, who gave them fits. They continued to run the tight bunch 3 by one with the Oscar out outside and alert fade on the other stuff, but instead of defenses playing off coverage out of respect for the Steelers' talented receivers like they had earlier in the season, they got up in their faces and bumped them during the route. Defenses know the quick passing game is all about rhythm and timing, and they knew that's just about all Ben and the Steelers did. So they weren't worried about defending the longer developing concepts or Ben holding the ball late in the down to beat them over the top. When he hits the back of his drop is when Deontay Johnson should be open. Because Ronald Darby is bullying him at the point of the attack and pushing him towards the sideline, it squeezes the window that Ben has to throw. Everybody knew he just wasn't going to throw it deep, whether it was because he didn't want to get hit, the offensive line being awful, or a combination of those and more. And defenses knew they could get away with certain things and play certain coverages to limit their offense. Washington changed up their own tendencies and played a lot of Tampa 2 zone, which has two deep safeties, so the alert route's taken away, and lets the underneath defenders aggressively bump the receivers since they have help from the second safety over the top. The main way to beat this coverage is to aggressively jam in the hole shot when Deontay Johnson clears his first underneath defender, but Washington knew Ben wouldn't try that, and because of his desire to get rid of the ball quickly, Despite being in a clean pocket, he doesn't hold it long enough to read the safety hanging over the inside receiver while James Washington starts coming free outside. The next week against Buffalo, it was all too apparent the Steelers had just become… predictable. The Bills felt comfortable playing physical football and jamming receivers at the line while recognizing those same formational tendencies and shutting them down. They too saw what Washington had done and used aspects of their game plan paired with film study to limit the Steelers to just 15 points. And when there's a smaller amount of things you can do as an offense, defenses take notice. The Bills start in a one high safety look, but rotate into Tampa 2 zone, which puts one safety over the alert, and also allows this corner to play tighter to the Oscar route, which condenses the space for the rest of the receivers underneath. Taron Johnson doesn't have to worry about getting under the Oscar, and can now play more aggressively on the inside receiver. Defenses dared Ben to do things he was once so good at, but no longer could. When they completely overplayed these tendencies, Ben couldn't beat them over the top, and the Steelers' offense struggled. And in the first half in Week 16 against the Colts, it looks like more of the same. 
But then something happened. The Steelers pulled off a shocking 21-point second-half comeback to win, which saw Ben turn back the clock and in many ways look like his old self. Maybe it was because they were down big, but we saw him hold the ball, sit in the pocket longer, create second plays, and be aggressive. Weeks 1 through 15, Ben would have tried to hit this dig route the moment he reached the top of his drop, but he uses his eyes to manipulate the safety, and by holding the ball a tick longer, the safety follows his eyes and triggers, then he hits Claypool deep. And when the Colts turned to what Washington and the Bills did the past several weeks, Ben and co were ready and made them pay. The Colts are playing cover 2 zone, which is the same as Tampa 2, but just keeps the middle linebacker lower and not sprinting down the middle of the field. And the Steelers use a concept based off their quick game tendencies to take the lead in the fourth quarter. They run a slant on the left to get the weak safety to move up, and anytime you're running a deeper route across the field, your quarterback's gonna have to hold the ball to give the receiver time to find the open space deep. Ben pump fakes, then throws a missile into the one spot that Juju can catch it. It's even more spectacular from the end zone angle, and you can see just from this one play how Ben's aggression opens up the defense and will cause them to adjust and back off a little. After the Colts game, he played a bit better, despite losing the playoff game to the Browns, which I also did an episode on, so I'll link that in the description box. But we saw his aggressive nature slowly return after that second half against the Colts. This Steelers team played an incredibly dangerous game limiting their offense in the ways that they did, and a lot of it wasn't Ben's fault at all. If you're not aggressively pushing the ball down the field, you have to play perfect, efficient football. And when the Steelers led the league in dropped passes and the run game was the worst in the NFL, that's just not a lasting formula. When you start removing pieces from the offensive pie, you have to be even more efficient at the already efficient style Pittsburgh was playing. And no matter how good they were at living underneath, eventually it crumbled. With Matt Canada taking over as the new offensive coordinator, I'll expect to see more diversity in the scheme and less predictability, more emphasis on the run game, and more misdirection in an offense that became way too stale. There were glimmers and flashes of the old Big Ben Roethlisberger near the end of the season, the guy who's built a Hall of Fame career on extending the play, then attacking defenses over the top. The Steelers have one of the most exciting receiving cores in the league with explosive talent everywhere you look. If this season is Big Ben's last hurrah before he rides off into the sunset, he better go out slinging. <laughs>